Hi everyone, my name is Chamaka Wachako and I would like to welcome you all to today's meeting. Um, I am a international medical graduate and a junior clinical fellow at King's College Hospital in London and I am one of the co-directors for Future Peds Res. Um, my co-director here is also Amy Lober. She is a fourth year medical student at Western Michigan University <clears throat> School of Medicine in Kalamazoo, Michigan. And she's also one of the co-directors. And, to, and together we will be um, hosting you today for today's um, webinar. We would also like to... Um, we would also like to um, acknowledge our, our supporting um, team and mentors from the APPD, Dr. John Frona and Colleen Hughes, who have been um, very supportive and very helpful in the preparation and putting together of these webinars. And we'll also like to give a warm shout out to um, our associate, Association of Pediatric Program Directors President, Dr. Patish, Patricia Poitvien and Dr. Megan Aylor. Um, and then we also would like to recognize um, Dr. April Buchanan Canon, the president of Comsep. Um, these three of um, these three have been very instrumental in helping and guiding us through this process, and we are very grateful to them for their support. Um, I would like to check if Dr. Buchanan is here um, to say a few words, and then we can go in into the rest of the webinar. Okay, um, she'll probably be joining us um, shortly. I would now like to introduce um, our webinars team. Um, Ziva Graf will be taking us through the rest of the webinar. Um, Ziva, you have the floor now. Hi, thank you so much for that wonderful introduction um, and welcome to everyone joining us tonight. We're so excited to have everyone at the Southwestern Regional Webinar um, and are grateful to all of our program directors and assistants, as well as coordinators and residents who've taken the time to be with us tonight. Our series goal for the regional webinar is providing pediatric residency applicants with the foundational knowledge surrounding the virtual interview season, well-rounded insight into the benefits of programs by region devoted and devoted time for live Q&A. Um, we'll be transitioning shortly into our breakout rooms. Um, and once we are in each breakout room, the applicants will be able to learn a little bit about some of the programs and at the end, ask some questions. Um, all the breakout rooms are going to be recorded. So if you're interested in learning about the other programs that are not in your breakout room, you can check out our YouTube page later for those recordings. Um, after that, we will meet back here and move into our resident happy hour. During the resident happy hour, um, there'll be residents and applicants in the breakout rooms to connect, discuss, and get more firsthand information about the various programs. So please feel free to grab beverage or snack for some fun conversations then. Um, please note that this portion is not going to be recorded. Um, quickly, before we move into our breakout rooms, um, we're gonna do a quick overview of the Southwestern area from the APPD leadership in that region. Hello. I'm not sure if I'm not sure if that means me next. Definitely. I'm going to try okay. to get your slides up as you <laughs> start. Okay. I can I can talk a little bit while we're doing that. Um, so my name is Michelle Arandis. I am a program director at the at UT Health San Antonio program um, and have been in Texas uh, as a program director and done all of my training in Texas. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to welcome all of you. I know it's a little bit presumptuous of us that our region is really essentially one state, um, but I do want to share with you guys a little bit about why um, why this great state is such a wonderful place uh, to consider and to look into as you as you uh, take the next step into into your training. And I will say we're very excited. Um, I know it's it's a challenge to uh, to to get used to this whole uh, virtual platform, but I think we've all done a great job uh, with that transition, and we look forward to meeting all of you guys. 
So Texas, you know, um, as as it has been pointed out before, is is really a very big and diverse place. Um, starting with the fact that we actually have. Um, some of the friendliest people in the country that you'll meet, um, it, you know, it, people think it is just a, a, a colloquialism, but but it really is something that is unique to, to all of our Texas cities and that we share is really folks are friendly, they're engaged, they're interested in getting to know you. Um, and and so consistent with with both our state motto friendship and and the roots of our name uh, with, with the native. Uh, native Caddo having uh, named us uh, using the word Tejas, um, we're, we're a big wide open space where folks can find a little bit of something um, for everyone. So um, I can attest to the friendliness of people in at least five different cities that I've visited in the last um, four four to five days um, as I've traveled around Texas with my son's baseball team. We've been as far north as Lubbock, Dr. Camp. We've been to Houston, to Dallas, uh, Fort Worth, and San Antonio. So um, definitely can tell you that folks are, are friendly and welcoming wherever you go. Um, I can also attest to the warm weather that we are currently experiencing. Um, but in general, Texas is a great place if you are somebody who does enjoy spending some of your time outside of work outdoors or doing active things. Um, you will you'll encounter countless state parks. Um, and as the little picture demonstrates, um, you can find an ecosystem to kind of match your mood uh, all throughout the state. So we have your, your coastal areas down south. We have the beautiful uh, Big Bend um, and uh, mountainous regions. We have some piney woods. Um, and then, of course, the Great Plains uh, up, up a little bit further north. And um, so a little bit of something for everyone as well. Um, not a small thing, low cost of living in the state of Texas um, and low, low, relatively low cost of housing in the state of Texas is a really significant factor, obviously, for a lot of you guys. And so something that I think definitely um, fits into the big picture of, of the next uh, step in your um, trajectory. Uh, next slide. I think maybe the next slide. Oh, okay. Um, and so, and also, you know, the things that, that sustain you outside of work, of course, diversity and culture. So Texas definitely has a very diverse population, not only that we serve throughout the state, which is a huge draw for many of us that, that work and, uh, and practice in the state, but also the population that you are living in in any number of the, the big cities and smaller cities. Um, lots of cultural, um, historical background and, um, and lots of really interesting uh, areas to explore. Um, and a lot of that diversity brings with it um, some great uh, eclectic mixes of, of great foods. Um, Austin, if you're not familiar, has, has been dubbed the music capital of the world. I think the South by Southwest Festival is, is really one of the big leading uh, causes of that. Um, sports all throughout the state, um, you know, football, basketball, baseball, you name it. Um, things like NASA, and of course, barbecue in almost any area that you that you hit, um, and lots of uh, lots of great places to visit if you're into exploring uh, uh, historical sites, the Alamo, and uh, we have some wonderful missions. There's uh, all scattered throughout the state. Wonderful historical uh, experiences as well. Next slide. As far as training, um, Texas, you know, may be the Lone Star State, but but actually brings, as as you can tell, a lot of opportunities in terms of pediatric residency training as well. Um, we do have uh, 13 programs in the state, uh, in in across 10 major cities all throughout. Um, every one of those programs brings really wonderful, rich opportunity to the the training experience. Um, obviously, we have a huge population. We're always looking to train and retain individuals individuals who are uh, going to serve our population in Texas. Um, but to that end, we definitely have a great mix of programs. So no matter what kind of program, whether it's a large program or a smaller community program, um, uh, large academic uh, based institutions, we have a number of opportunities for different types of training experiences. Um, going across the fellowships, including research pathways, rural pathways, global pathways, 
um, we have really robust um, uh, organizational leadership in the state that helps uh, the programs in, in through the, the TMA to also engage in advocacy work. Um, and really it is, uh, although it is a big, uh, a big catchment area, the, the programs actually do a great job of, of making sure that we're meeting everybody's needs. The communities that you serve, uh, everything from our refugee populations to our um, local populations, as well as, of course, the unique sort of border communities that we also um, provide care for. So lots of different things, depending on what you're looking for. Um, and so if being in Texas is something that's good for you for for other reasons, there's definitely going to be a program that will fit your goals and your needs. Um, and if you haven't explored a place and you're interested in trying something different for your training, it's a really wonderful environment to uh, to come and and meet some wonderful people and uh, and really learn uh, some great foundational medicine. No matter what what stage you're moving into next, so um, definitely a place where you're going to find something for everyone. I. I I think you'll learn that as you go through the programs today, but we welcome you guys to reach out and uh, let us know if there's any questions that you have at the end of today. I'm sure that we could connect you with somebody who could who could give you the information you need. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing that. We are just getting ready now to move into our breakout rooms, which is the most uh, dynamic part of the Zoom <laughs> requires the most Zoom savviness. So uh, we are just getting that all put together. Uh, but I believe before, I'm not sure we, we covered the resident room summary. So I think we've actually got everything going. I will pull up the slides. Everybody just bear with us for one moment as we get this sorted out. Also, I'll note that um, throughout the your time in the breakout rooms, you can be using the chat box on Zoom. Um, and also, if you are on Twitter, you can use the hashtags FPR webinar and hashtag Peds Match 2023 um, to tweet any insights or anything that, uh, that's on your mind throughout the webinar. All right, I think we will get started um, and we'll get everyone into their um, into their correct breakout rooms. Um, so. Welcome everybody to breakout room one. We have some great programs here to talk today. So I think uh, without further ado, we will get started. Sorry, I was actually going to have my APD um, do the, the uh, presentation because you guys have already heard from me, but it seems like they might've gotten sorted into the wrong room. So I will go ahead and get started so that we don't lose time. Um, so as I mentioned, I'm Dr. Rondis, I'm the, with the UT Health San Antonio program in San Antonio. Um, and joining me that's in the room today is uh, Gina Eckersberg, who is my uh, chief of residents uh, and uh, participating in the uh, nephrology fellowship match this year. Um, and uh, my two APDs who hopefully will be added at some point, uh, Dr. Dina Tom uh, and- I'm here. Dr. Oh, good. Oh, there you are. Bye okay. me. <laughs> Would you like to take over, Dr. Tom? No, you're doing great. <laughs> I, had I had only gotten to the introduction. So Dr. Tom and then Dr. Elizabeth Hansen. Um, so I have an inpatient and an outpatient APD, but uh, Dr. Tom was going to kind of talk for, uh, for us if that's okay. Sure. Yeah, I'm happy to. Hi, I'm Dina Tom. I was, um, I'm fortunate enough to have been a um, resident at, um, at UT Health San Antonio and then, you know, forced their hand to, to hire me. So I've been here quite a while and really excited because um, I just started as APD. So um, recently and loving it. So in terms of UT Health San Antonio, I'm obviously very biased because it's my home and it's where I was trained. And I love the, the, family-friendly um, community of uh, physicians that I work with and faculty and residents. And I, I feel like we're absolutely like everyone does probably feel like we're the best. So a few wonderful program highlights. You guys can obviously see the slide in front of you. So I'm not going to read off of it, but I'll show you, uh, tell you a few of highlights that I think make a, a significant difference in the training for residents. So, you know, as the catchment area for a huge uh, portion of South Texas, we are a level one, the only level one pediatric trauma center. And so we get all traumas from South Texas um, and we are a referral center for traumas, which is wonderful and unique in and of itself because we see a population of patients that we would normally not see. 
And um, it, specifically, we see a lot of patients who are um, refugees or migrants or um, patients who are in unique circumstances. I was on service last week and took care of several of those types of patients. And so it really gives a unique perspective to residents and faculty about how to um, really address trauma-informed care and social determinants of health. So that's one thing I think uh, is unique to our program. We also um, have, uh, we're an ECMO center for uh, in our NICU as well as on, in our PICU, which is wonderful experience for residents and faculty, but to be exposed to patients who require that level of care and the inter interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary care that comes with those types of patients. We are the only AYA cancer treatment center in South Texas. So it's a unique perspective if you're interested in hematology oncology to um, really see how we care for patients who fall in between being children and adults and um, how they navigate that and use protocols and do research for those patients. That's a huge, um, initiative for our hospital and a great experience for residents. We um, have a wonderful complex care clinic that is run by seasoned faculty. It is also a multidisciplinary care clinic that allows patients with complex medical issues to have a true medical home with multiple different subspecialty uh, physicians that care for them all at one time. So they have the ability to have neurologists and uh, like a PCP, neurologists, dietitians, um, social workers, and um, you know other ne nephrologists, pulmonologists that all come together in a clinic to serve those patients. And it's a wonderful experience for residents to see what a medical home for complex patients can look like. We also have um, individual educational and career plans for our residents which is nice to have a track. I had some residents last week who were excited to declare their track or you know, change tracks, and we're excited to get some advising about how to go about that. We really um, have a wonderful, uh, through our medical school, we have a wonderful um, center for the humanities and ethics, which feeds into our, uh, our unique populations that we wanna make sure that we provide equitable care for, such as the LGBTQ community, provide global health, and then um, really a diversity emphasis. We're very proud that our medical school, which feeds obviously into our residents and we get to train our medical students is um, the rated number one in diversity in um, Texas. So we pride ourselves on that. So you can see on our um, kind of details of our program that we are a medium size. We classify as a medium size program with about 15 people, uh, residents per class, a total of about 45. Half of the residency class on any given year is usually fellowship bound. Half um, remains in um, general pediatrics in some form or fashion or doesn't do a fellowship. We have several different fellowships and then also have a really wonderful success rate in the fellowships that we, uh, in residents who apply to fellowship, even in fellowships that we don't have. So that's wonderful. I talked a little bit about our migrant um, uh, exposure to migrant health. And um, we also have a really wonderful focus in our program on, um, on child and family health care, not just for our patients, but also for our residents and our faculty. We have really wonderful curriculum built in for uh, that really helps residents to navigate starting families and, and um, having a lot of support system from their faculty. So um, if you guys want to go to UT Health SAP at PD Res, it's a really great place um, on Instagram to see how our, those are, it's run by our residents and they post on there all the time. And it's really great to see kind of the community of residents that have, um, you know, how they foster their relationship with each other and, you know, create that, that family friendly environment that we really pride ourselves on. Awesome. Thank you so much. I was that was great timing. Sorry, I couldn't get oh, a good warning in, but that worked out really nicely. Okay, good. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. All right, next up, UT Southwestern. It's really nice to be here, and I want to thank the folks who did all the heavy lifting organizing this. Um, I won't get too philosophical, but with COVID, and it forcing the entire country to think about virtual interviews, I think it's really opened up a more just and fluid and flexible way for people to see what's out there. So we'll do our best to give you an idea about what things are happening in Dallas. Um, it is a big city in a big state with lots of diversity. 
I did not grow up here, uh, although I've raised two kids here who self-identify as Texans and they now are in serious relationships with other Texans and that makes me quite happy, they're nice people. Um, you really get challenged uh, in any of the centers in the state. Um, I have seen things here that I had only read about in medical school and that happens with a fair amount of regularity. So it's a chance to really get exposed to demographic diversity, pathophysiologic diversity, diversity of colleagues. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful place to round out and to start your career. And then the other thing is there's so many children here that we really need pediatricians, which makes all our jobs as program directors that much more fun because we can get to know you and cultivate you and not think that, well, you're gonna have to leave because we really need pediatricians here. So um, big hospital, it's our hospitals in the background here, uh, lots of subspecialty services. I just finished writing letters of reference for our residents who are gonna do fellowship applications. And uh, I think we prepare them quite well between the electives we have and their ability to get exposure to really whatever they want. We have continuity clinics across the Metroplex. That's been something we've developed in the last 10 years. And it's been really interesting to be able to give people in their senior year the flexibility to pick what clinic they might wanna to go to as a complement if they'd like to what they've been to already. And then we, um, actually you're gonna meet Andy at the end of this. Uh, this was largely at his encouragement. We joined this pilot study of ACGME to do an X plus Y schedule. No schedule's perfect. They all have advantages and disadvantages, but the, the motivation behind this was we wanted to round out our experience at a very busy hospital so that you'd get more outpatient experience. And I think that that's been achieved. Also, it allows people to have more flexibility in terms of electives and wellness. I love the ability to let people come up with new electives. If you go to our website, we've got our electives list, sort of like a course booklet. We've got more than 50 now. Most of those were handcrafted for and by individual residents. It's a nice way to be creative. We've tried to push opportunities for scholarship across the board, and uh, I feel like we've done a nice job. And again, writing letters for people, I was able to invoke really specific details about really impactful projects. And then because we are in Texas, I don't mean to trash the state, but you know, our social safety net leaves a lot to be desired. Tax rates are incredibly low compared to other places where I lived where you'd write a check to the government and they take care of things. There's a lot less of that here. And what that seems to have allowed for is a sort of grassroots approach to activism. And so we've spent a lot of time building community partnerships with NGOs and with community activists. Actually, we're cooking up something with the Pro Museum where we're gonna be able to give all of our patients a free one-year membership to the Pro. Well, that's beautiful. It's also kind of sad because the people we're gonna give them to, it would be hard for them to afford the admission of the pro without that. And so if you wanna come here to try to make a social difference, we need that. And then we have quite a bit of different ranges of experiences for education and we intentionally try to experiment with those to see what works best. So with that, I'm gonna stop talking. And I think that Andy, Yalini and Caitlin are here. Andy is our, one of our associate program directors, former chief resident, and Yalini and Caitlin are what we call chieflets. They've been selected already as chiefs for next year. And so if you came here, they would be very important in your lives because chiefs make a big difference here. And then I'll let you go to our website, see some of these other efforts that we've had, including grants for research, special training paths, and diversity initiatives. Our social media doesn't have everything, but between it and the website, I think you get a pretty good idea about what it's like here. All right, I think Andy's here. I will stop talking. You guys have just about one minute left. Okay, well, I'll be quick. Thank you, uh, Dr. Bikini, for going over uh, the highlights. I just wanted to, uh, to say a few words about life in Dallas. Uh, I, I'm a grad of this program and I've been here for about five years as a faculty member. It's a fantastic place to live. Uh, I'm not from Dallas either and I moved here. Uh, it's a big city, fourth largest metropolitan area in the country. It's a city of immigrants, really, from all over the country, all over the world. So very, very diverse. Um, there's lots of different uh, neighborhoods and uh, sort of living situations that uh, meet people's lifestyles. So I live downtown in a high rise. Folks live in, you know, walkable neighborhoods and townhomes. Other folks live in, you know, single family homes and um, have a family. And 
Uh, those are all things that our residents do and it's, and it's uh, doable here. Um, for the sake of time, I'm not gonna say too, too much more, but a few folks who uh, I just wanna introduce and will be around after the session are uh, Yalini and Caitlin, uh, who Dr. McKinney mentioned. And so I'll just ask them to say hello real quick. And we'll, we'll be done uh, in just a moment. Hi, I'm Yalini. I'm one of the third years at UT Southwestern. Thanks for having us. Um, we'll be around afterwards. So ask any specific questions that you would like. And I'm Caitlin. Uh, as Yalini mentioned, we'll be around. Um, and then I also just wanted to plug our Instagram. We do have something now we're doing featured Fridays where um, applicants can kind of see uh, uh, a little bit more about our residents on an individual level and what they like about the program, what they like about Dallas. And yeah. Awesome. Thank you all so much for, for that um, explanation and introduction to your program and for being here. Um, all right, so next up, we have Texas Tech in Lubbock, is that right? Yes, so I'm Tammy Camp, and I'm the program director here at Texas Tech in Lubbock. And a couple of things that I probably would just try to really highlight. Um, we are in the middle, we're the largest city between probably Dallas and, and Albuquerque. And so we're kind of out in the middle of West Texas. Um, and we actually serve a large part of Eastern New Mexico, um, as well as West Texas and the Panhandle of Texas. And so lots of opportunity to see um, things that really come from a very rural setting um, and the care that um, we have many, many transfers that come in from our rural hospitals that are near Lubbock um, and as far away as, you know, three or four hours from Lubbock. Um, and so we get to be in on the great opportunity to, to make some diagnoses of things um, that frequently I, I've, you read about as well. Um, we have some... Um, communities that are near us that um, just lead to a significant number of potentially autosomal recessive diseases that I never had the opportunity to do anything with besides read and, and then now they're in my clinics. And so lots of opportunities to see all kinds of, of different diseases, even though we are in a smaller community. Um, I think probably one of the biggest things that I wanna talk about is is our continuity clinic experience. Um, you know, we have looked at all kinds of things with X plus Y scheduling, and then we've also kind of tried to, to look at our continuity experience. And, and honestly, we, we established a continuity clinic that is completely freestanding, and it is the medical home for probably over 3,000 patients that our residents are the primary caregivers for. And they, those, res, those patients identify that particular clinic as their medical home. It's only run by our residents. And I think um, just this past year, we actually were looking at other potential methods of scheduling. And so we looked at some data and our continuity experience for our residents with their own patients, seeing them over and over is greater than 90% for their well child visits and 67% for their sick visits. And so we're really proud of that because that's, that's a great opportunity to really build relationship with families and patients over time. And I think when you speak with our residents, um, that's probably one of, one of their favorite places um, because of that experience. We do have um, an 18 month cycling board review curriculum that we do over protected half um, academic half days. Um, and we give our residents opportunities. Um, all of our first year residents get to attend the Texas Pediatric Society meeting. Our second year residents get to attend the AAP um, NCE. And then our third year residents all attend the Texas Pediatric Society um, Advocacy Day in Austin. And so great opportunities to kind of have an opportunity to participate in organized medicine and learn that um, hands-on. Um, Think um, as we think about other things, um, as far as relationship is probably one of the biggest things within our groups. Um, we are a small program, and so we have eight residents per class. And so those residents really have the opportunity to get to know each other well. They know each other's families. 
um, our, I, I believe our current second year residents, um, I, I think that they um, routinely had lunch together, celebrated birthdays together, but they routinely would meet outside of the residency program once a month um, just to celebrate something. And so that was a great opportunity. As far as diversity, you know, we worked really hard to increase diversity within the program by just keeping an open mind during our selection process. And we also um, have lots of opportunities to participate within the community um, through our community-based organizations and your community clinics, um, as well as just um, becoming locally active with, with service organizations. Um, and then I wanted to um, mention, I have Dr. Sarah, Sarah Chaudhry with us today. She's um, one of our current second year residents and just as a go-getter. And um, so I thought I would let her introduce herself really quick and then she can share um, just for a moment. Yeah, I won't take about one minute left. Perfect, I won't take up too much time. I'm. Um, I'm Sada. I'm one of the second year residents here. Um, and I'm going to be on for the resident spotlight. So if anybody would like to learn more about Lubbock in general, or just my experience, as well as, you know, experience in general at this residency program, I'm more than happy to provide insights. I'll actually be having um, two more of our second year class joining in on that resident spotlight. So if like I said, we have questions. We're more than happy to answer them. If you want to get into the nitty gritty, I, you can just tell I'm super happy at my program. So, Great. Thank you so much. Thank you all for being here. All right. Next up. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Mary Huckabee. I'm the program director at Driscoll Children's Hospital. Thank you for putting this on for us tonight. It's great to have a chance for all of us programs to get to showcase ourselves to all of you out there looking for pediatric programs to join. Um, I'm actually a Corpus Christi native. Um, I grew up here. I went away for my medical school and residency training, and I have come back here and have been program director a little bit over a year. And I'm really excited about where Driscoll has gone in the, I won't say how many years, um, in between uh, those two things. Um, Driscoll's a really unique place to me. We are a community tertiary care center. We're a freestanding children's hospital. We're affiliated with Texas A&M. So we have that university support, even though we are really a community-based program. So for me, we have it all. Um, we have almost all of the medical and surgical subspecialties we need to take care of patients. It's very rare that we need to send a patient off somewhere else. And our service area is huge. We pretty much have Victoria South and over to Laredo, which is about 31 counties here in South Texas. Um, we have a growing ICU and growing cardiac ICU, um, as well as NICU population. And our patient population comes in with the wackiest, weirdest things I've ever seen in my career, mixed with the bread and butter pediatrics that you need to learn as a resident to be able to go out and practice and, and care for patients on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we also have medical students from five different feeder schools. So our residents get a great experience um, as resident teachers um, during their time here. Our continuity clinics um, are with local pediatric practices, and there are a variety of setups that our residents get to have experience with in that setting. Some of them are in busy private practices, um, all the way to community health centers, um, pay as you go with very different resources. And we do allow our residents some um, freedom in their third year if they want to transition from one setting or the other to help prepare them for their later career growth. I think we have a really robust didactic curriculum, including morning report, noon conference, and grand rounds with an 18-month rotating curriculum so that you don't miss out on anything when you're on essential rotations and may not be able to make it to lecture. We have a very structured program for residents as teachers curriculum, as well as DEI curriculum that alternate months. Um, and our simulation center continues to grow um, with lots of opportunities for residents to get in and do some simulation work for anything that they're not getting great um, volume of as a resident. 
We offer several different seminars throughout the year to really help with leadership, practice management, um, and other skills outside of our regular uh, didactic curriculum. And our residents are very heavily involved in quality improvement, uh, research, and advocacy efforts here in our local community. Clara Driscoll was the founder of our hospital, and she was really devoted to education, outreach, and advocacy here in the South Texas area and putting our patients first and ensuring that their needs are met in our communities. And that's still the Driscoll mission. And we're still devoted to expert care, education, outreach, and advocacy. And that really shines through the day-to-day -day work that's done here by all of our faculty and residents um, and will be part of your experience here as a resident. We're medium-sized. We have about 16 residents per year. Check out our Facebook and Instagram and you can really get a great look at what's going on both in the program and in residence life outside of the program. But overall, I think Corpus is the big selling point. The hospital is 20 minutes from everything, which is great life for busy resident schedule. And that beach is included in that 20 minutes from everything. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, all right, I think we have just one more program left to share with you all. Am I up? Go for it. Okay, thank you. Hi. Um, okay, so I have to bat uh, clean up. So hopefully people are still awake and not too, uh, not too far into whatever drinks they brought for happy hour. So thanks for everybody for uh, for joining. My name is Adam Wolf. I'm uh, one. I'm the the new program director of the uh, the Baylor College of Medicine program here in San Antonio. Um, I just started in this role a couple of weeks ago, but I've actually been mentoring into this role for years. So I have been here now for just over eight years. I joined the program as it was starting, so I was one of the founding associate program directors. <clears throat> I was brought here specifically to help develop longitudinal curricula, um, and so that's really kind of how I got my start. Is a lot of our current longitudinal curricula, but um, I kind of moved into the role of, of being able to lead the program fully. Um, my clinical role is in pediatric hematology and oncology, uh, and so I work with our residents there as well. And then I'm also our, our assistant dean uh, for medical education, so I report back to the college in Houston. What that allows us to do actually is have a nice relationship with the, with the program in Houston. We're a completely separate residency. We have a different identity, different curriculum. We're governed completely separately. Uh, but we share a lot of teaching faculty. So a lot of the faculty from the Baylor program in Houston will come out and teach with us. Uh, some of us go out and teach with them. Um, I teach at the Fellows College in Houston frequently. So it's a really great relationship to have brought the Baylor kind of academic excellence uh, to um, a more community-based hospital at the Children's Hospital of San Antonio. We are a freestanding 200-bed children's hospital uh, in downtown San Antonio. We are intentionally located in the poorest zip code of the city. And we see a lot of patients who um, have Medicaid or are uninsured or un uninsurable if they're undocumented, we take care of all of them. So it's really a great opportunity for residents who have a, a heart for service and advocacy. Uh, we also provide a lot of opportunities for leadership and scholarship. Um, so a couple of things I wanted to make sure that I um, highlighted about our program. Um, so we, like the, uh, the UT Southwestern program, we are um, uh, on an X plus Y schedule. We just started it. Our schedule, I think, looks somewhat similar to theirs, actually, because I modeled it after a presentation I saw their program give at an APPD meeting. Um, so we have two weeks of continuity clinic every eight weeks. Why am I spending time telling you that? Well, our Y structure is a little different from some of the other X plus Y programs in that we um, do not have our residents taking vacation during any of that time. They don't take any time off at all. So we actually protected the Y blocks to be two weeks of pure ambulatory pediatrics. So we're focusing 25% of your educational time in continuity clinic and related longitudinal things such as advocacy, mental health, developmental behavioral pediatrics. Um, and that allows us to say that really we are gonna focus on training people who if they want to be working and do primary care, which is what we need coming out of residency, we're gonna make sure that you're getting that time and it's protected for you. Um, so I think that's really important. Now we are only two weeks into our X plus Y schedule, but I will say so far the feedback from both faculty and residents has been ecstatic. Uh, so people seem really, really happy with it. So I'm excited for that. Um, we also have no 24 hour call. So all of our inpatient services have been converted to shift based. Uh, so we do have a night float, which is broken into two week blocks that you do during the first and third years. Um, our uh, 
curriculum, um, it, our, our board review curriculum has shifted from daily noon conferences. We're now doing uh, a protected academic half day on Fridays. Uh, we're doing it in a problem-based multidisciplinary way. So each topic is two hours long and it's a workshop and it's taught by several faculty from primary and subspecialty perspectives focused around a presenting problem. So it really gives us a chance to teach you to think clinically uh, rather than systems-based. And uh, we can incorporate board content uh, right into the, uh, or board preparation right into the, uh, the, the half days. Um, we have a really strong focus on lifestyle and wellness. And I think that that uh, shines through in a new initiative we started this year. We actually, every, every two months, each cohort of residents has opt-out group uh, psychotherapy. So we actually have contracted, we got money from the hospital to do this, believe it or not. We contracted with a local uh, psychology program that comes out and does group therapy with residents. They can opt out if they want, but so far nobody has. Um, and the feedback from that has been extremely good as well. So our residents will get six of those sessions per year, unless they choose uh, not to. Um, and then we have a number of benefits that are aimed at trying to make your life better as a resident. So we have free parking, we have free food. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that we can try to make sure that people um, feel well in their, in their roles. And then the last thing I would mention is our diversity initiatives. Um, we have moved completely to a holistic review. We do not look at people's board scores numbers at all anymore. Um, and we just, we look at all the qualities that we think are gonna make you a, a good fit and a, a strong performer in our program. Um, so what that means is that it, we don't have a cutoff anymore, even though there was one in Frida, we no longer do that. Um, I will say that, that that effort has been accompanied by an intentional um, uh, improvement in diversity. We've gone from less than 10% URM residents about four to five years ago. This current year, we have 38% of our residents who identify themselves as, as underrepresented in medicine. Um, and I'm really proud of that because that's a four-year longitudinal effort that's taken a lot of, um, a lot of deliberate uh, uh, attention. So um, I think I'll stop there because that's my five minutes and I really look forward to hearing any questions. Thanks. Thank you so much. Um, all right, so that's all of our programs. Thank you again, everybody for being here, for sharing about your programs. Thank you to um, all the participants who joined us. Um, I believe we will all move back into uh, the main room for a quick wrap up and then uh, we'll be able to move on to our resident happy hour after that. Um, I guess just quickly before we move on, um, did anybody have any questions they wanted to ask here before we go back? I'm just gonna say that nobody mentioned HEB is one of the big draws to Texas and we do have HEB in San Antonio. So I'm drinking my HEB sparkling water right now. Adam, that's my happy hour drink. Yes, it, it was a terrible neglect on all of our part to mention HEB. For those of you who are not from Texas, HEB is a grocery store chain that's pretty much exclusively here with some stores I think in Mexico and Louisiana or something like that, but it's almost uh, uniquely a Texas grocery store. It's definitely worth moving here just for that. Great, well, I think that um, our breakout rooms will be closing here in a moment, but if anybody has any other questions or anything they wanna do say while we're uh, all here together, otherwise we'll head back to the breakout to the main room shortly. Thank you again, everybody. I'm joined today by one of my APDs, um, Andrea Tatum, who is in the section of academic general peds. And I am, I am and my day job is um, pediatric emergency medicine. So, um, so why are we so special here in Houston? Well, I, I do love Houston. There's a few programs in Houston, as you probably just saw, or as you already know, but um, we do have the, the largest program in the, in the nation um, and also the most diverse in the nation. We have the most diverse city in the nation, uh, Houston itself. Um, we take um, total about uh, 36 categorical pediatric residents every year, but all in with med peds, child neurology, and child, you know, child genetics in our combined pro 
programs. We take about 65 interns every year. So we have a total of about 192 or so residents every year. Um, Texas Children's is also the largest hospital and in, in children's hospital in the nation. And it, um, we have very high acuity and very um, complex uh, children that we serve and culturally very diverse and um, and uh, an underserved community that we are we are um, honored to serve and and work with. As far as our specialties that we serve um, or specialties that are available, if you want to do a fellowship um, later on after your residency, um, we do have every subspecialty represented. Um, we've had uh, this year we had forty. Um, of our graduating residents apply to fellowships this year. So many, many of our of our residents do fellowships. Um, previously, it, it has been about 50-50. 50% go into primary care, 50% do, um, do academic um, fellowships. Um, within our residency program, outside of our, our traditional categorical program, we have a global health program, a global health track. It's a three-year categorical pediatric program with an additional year that is spent at one of our uh, Baylor Pediatric AIDS Initiative sites in Africa. So Botswana, Malawi, Lesotho, and Swazi are the most common uh, places that our residents go for that year. So that year is spent in addition to your three years here in the States. We also have a primary care lead um, or leadership program. Um, we It's termed a lead, L-E-A-D. And that is, it's really for caring for um, those communities who are, are underserved and, and primary care is the goal, but it really is about um, serving those communities who are underserved at the end of your, of your residency. Um, we take four of those um, lead residency year. We take five global health residency year. And finally, we have our physician scientist program or our pediatrician scientist program. That is, it's really targeted more towards MD, PhD. You should have an, a PhD in order to, to qualify to um, for this this three year program, and that is for the AA for the ABP for the American Board um, of Pediatrics. It is um, in the integrated research track pathway, integrated research pathway, or the IRP. So you do two years of your categorical requirements plus an additional year that is spent doing primarily research with two clinical rotations um, served uh, that you serve you know during that last year. So we have a ton of other opportunities. I think I'm running out of time, um, but it, most I, I am. I think we are proud that we've most recently been ranked the second um, uh, children's hospital in the nation by the U.S. News and World Report, which I'm, I'm I had nothing to do with at all. But I'm proud to say that that we we have made it to number two. So um, I love my colleagues. We have a very large house staff office um, leadership team. We have five APDs, we have five chief residents every year, um, and we have some amazing coordinators and administrators in our office. So um, you can see all of the additional curricula that we offer, um, and I'm happy to answer any questions. So I think my five minutes are up. I'll give it up to the next team. All right, thank you so much. Um, you we have access. You'll be able to have access to the infographics on our website. Um, so please do check them out. All right, thank you. Hi everybody, I'm Luis Marin. I'm one of the um, chief residents for this year. Um, so I'm here to talk a little bit about um, Texas South here in El Paso. Um, so El Paso is a little bit uh, unique in that we're part of the only, uh, you know, among a couple of the towns around us, uh, they're actually in a different time zone than the rest of Texas, because Texas is really that big. Um, and so another really unique thing about, um, you know, where we're at is uh, we're uniquely situated right on the United States-Mexico border, um, which gives us a lot of great opportunities for um, anybody interested in global health or especially, you know, health on the U.S.-Mexico border. Um, so one of the things I really wanted to highlight in uh, the next couple of minutes was just, um, you know, being uniquely situated here, you know, what does that mean for our uh, residents? So a lot of our residents kind of, you know, come into, um, when they start with us, they're um, really enthusiastic about being able to provide care for um, 
patients who, you know, um, have access to two healthcare systems really. So they can choose to get a lot of their care in the United States. They can also choose to um, get their care in Mexico, um, which has its advantages, but also has unique, um, I guess, challenges and opportunities for our residents to kind of navigate a lot of those, um, you know, social situations um, and being able to, um, you know, keep in mind that our patients do have access to two healthcare systems and um, that kind of modif modifies the way that we treat them a little bit. Um, so something that's also, um, I guess, a highlight for our um, residents is that um, we don't have fellows. Um, so everything that we do um, as residents is really just us working with our attendings. So this comes to, to be a big advantage for anybody who's interested in um, really doing something that's more procedure-based. So a lot of our residents really enjoy the NICU. They really enjoy um, PICU, our emergency medicine rotations, our hospital medicine rotations as well, um, because it's really just, you know, as the second or third year resident, you're considered the senior, you get a lot more of a leadership role um, than if we were to have any uh, fellows with us. Um, also to touch on a couple of other um, things, um, I think it was a uh, very good introduction that we had about Texas. I agree, El Paso, even though we're on the far west side of it, um, all of that really applies. We are definitely a very friendly city, um, great food all over the place and a lot of uh, things to do. We are right next to uh, New Mexico as well and they have a lot of great state parks. And so that's something our uh, residents enjoy doing a lot as well. Um, as far as our curriculum, um, we have a 13 block curriculum. So that means every four weeks we're switching from one rotation to the other. Um, during our inpatient um, rotations, we do have a night float person, um, night float resident that's able to take over some of those night shifts and give um, our day residents uh, a break um, so that they can dedicate time to studying and other activities. Um, and then, Last thing I really uh, want to highlight is just that, uh, as I mentioned, being able to provide care for um, our patients who live on the United States-Mexico border has been very unique. Um, but this past year, um, we've been able to provide care for a lot of our um, refugee patients that come from all over Latin America. Um, we're also fortunate enough that um, we have a military base um, in El Paso as well. Um, that takes a lot of um, our refugees that came from the Middle East. So being able to um, interact with a lot of those families, um, hear about their stories and, you know, start thinking about all of these, you know, diagnoses that we would never think of just because of the region we're at, um, really, I think, opened uh, the eyes of a lot of our residents into, you know, what would it would be like to provide care in another, um, you know, other types of health care um, to other cultures. And um, it was just a very rewarding um, think opportunity for everybody this year. Um, you know, the circumstances were a little bit unfortunate, but um, our residents, I think, really got uh, some great exposure to that. Um, and that's really something that I think is emphasized uh, longitudinally throughout the uh, next, you know, throughout the three years. Um, along with that, um, we have a, multiple lectures in, you know, diversity, inclusion. Um, and so our residents were able to actually apply these skills to work with uh, unique patient populations that um, we had in El Paso. Um, there's a, plenty of other things I would love to talk about, uh, but I realize I'm running out of time. So um, other than that, I'll, you know, I'll stick around to see if there are any questions, but I think it's about time to pass it over to, to the next person. Hey, um, so next is ETMB. So thank you, first of all, to the Future Re um, Pete's Res and APBD and Concept for giving us this opportunity to have this informative platform. So we re really appreciate your time and everything that you have done to, um, to organize this. My name is Amber Harefield. I'm the program director for the pediatrics residency program at um, University of Texas Medical Branch in Galveston. I am here with our chief resident, um, Alex Halloran. Um, he's here this evening as well. And I'm excited to give you kind of a snippet Bit about our program. So we were established in 1938 and we're affiliated with the University of Texas Medical School, which is the oldest medical school in Texas. Our main campus is located on Galveston Island, which is just off the coast.
coast of the Gulf of Mexico, south of Houston. And we have other sites on the mainland um, in League City and also Clear Lake campuses. Our patient population draw is mostly from the Gulf Coast, from about the Beaumont area to about the Victoria area. We also have a diverse patient population and have a um, outstanding um, residents of diverse ethnic, sexual orientation, religious, and racial backgrounds. Our program is a me medium-sized program. We take 14 residents per year. Our residents are involved in our mentorship program. We have a well-being committee, resident council. We have a public relations committee, and we have resident representation on our program evaluation committee. Our clinical strengths are in primary care and neonatology, and our curriculum reflects this with a strong longitudinal continuity clinic in two of our sites. We have ambulatory-based subspecialties, and we have a level four NICU with resident supervisory roles in the PGY2 year. Overall, our residents progress toward independent practice under the supervision of the faculty and upper level residents, um, but with only a couple of areas of fellowship. Um, we have a neonatology fellowship in allergy and immunology, so this gives our residents um, a lot of opportunities to exercise their autonomy and, and their clinical skills. So we also have 13 blocks. Um, our curriculum is set up to have most of the hospital rotations kind of towards the beginning of residency, and then over the course of the three years, it kind of um, moves towards most of the individualized blocks and the selectives in the third year. Our most recent community outreach is partnering with our residents with our who are on our advocacy and school health experiences um, with the Smart Family Literacy Program, which aims to provide literacy in some of the um, areas of our community. And our didactic schedule, we have morning report for our hospital services. We do an academic half day on Wednesdays and we also, with our academic half day, group our residents into houses, kind of think Harry Potter house kind of thing. Um, they do group quizzes, individual quizzes. Um, there's a point system for accountability. We do weekly ABP teaching and um, content outlines that are sent to the residents. And then we've also just started a preclinical conference for our residents who are in continuity clinic as well. Um, residents complete a scholarly activity project and they submit it to the Texas Pediatric um, e-poster contest every year um, for our graduates. Um, in addition, our graduates present at our annual Pediatrics by the Gulf CME conference. And Galveston is a fun place. Uh, there's a pleasure pier. We have the seawall, a lot of historic homes, and there's a lot of rich Texas history in Galveston. There's Mardi Gras, there's Motorcycle Rally, there's Dickens on the Strand, and then many other holiday celebrations. If you're more of a city person, we're not far from Houston, um, and many people live either in between or on the island. If you are someone who's bringing a partner or children in, the, um, we have good schools in the area and a lot of job opportunities um, with NASA and that sort of thing. Um, overall, we're excited about this interview season and look forward to meeting you on your interview trail. And you're always welcome to check out our website um, at utmb.edu slash pd. Hey, y'all. So hey, Amber and Elaine and all my people in Texas. Um, so I'm Emma Mori. I'm the program director at the University of Texas Health Science Center at Houston. Um, I've been in this role two years. And uh, for six years prior to stepping into the program director role, I was one of the APDs. And then I always like to share with folks that I actually uh, completed my residency at UT. So it's got a very special place in my heart. And I very, feel very honored and privileged to be in this role. That being said, I'm usually very transparent with people that when I came to Texas, I actually thought I would do my residency training and then I would get back to my home state of North Carolina. And so when I always tell folks that I've been here 13 years longer than I intended, they question, so what anchors you here? And I like to tell them it's uh, the people, um, the pl place and the patients. And so with UT Houston, um, we're considered a medium sized program. Um, with 72 categorical residents, 32 med peds residents. We also have uh, three child neuro residents uh, per class and then one pediatric genetic residents. Um, it's fantastic to have that diversity and that, that size because everybody gets to learn from each other, but you also don't lack for friends and mentorship. We have a number of fellowship opportunities that you can transition into, but also learn from your more senior peers, especially if you are interested in continuing your, your training. And then when it comes to the patients, um, as Elaine probably um, mentioned earlier, we are located in the 
largest medical center in the United States. And so what's nice is that you're not only gonna get exposed to the bread and butter, but also what we call the weird and wacky. So things that you would only read sometimes in your board books, you may have an opportunity to take care of a patient who has that same diagnosis. So if you learn by doing, I definitely think um, this program is one that's going to provide you the exposure you desire. We rotate out of three main clinical sites. So Children's Memorial Herman Hospital, which is a medical, uh, sorry, a children's hospital within a larger hospital system. We also have a safety net hospital that we rotate through, LBJ. And then our residents get exposed to um, Hemonc at MD Anderson. Our program recently transitioned to an X plus Y curriculum. Um, and we've continued to enjoy um, the flexibility that that opportunity has provided us. And then finally, the place, uh, Houston itself. So I grew up in a small city in North Carolina. So when I came to Houston, I felt a bit overwhelmed, but I think I was always meant to live in Houston. So the opportunity to get uh, the sports, up, the sports uh, playing, the concerts that come here, the um, food, which everybody mentioned earlier, and the diversity, most of all, is really what's really anchored me to Houston and why I continue to call it home. And it's a place that I look forward to raising my family in. I do think what's nice about um, Texas in general, and certainly the institutions, uh, Baylor, myself, and then also UTMB, is that we collaborate with each other. So you're going to find whatever program's best for you, but do know that we are friends. Um, we, we talk to each other. We share mentorship. We probably even sometimes have one partner in one program and another partner in another program. So it's, it's also nice if your couple's matching. But I think what's uh, fantastic about just being within the, the vicinity is that we do share opportunities for mentorship as well as clinical exposure. And I have on this um, session my chief resident, uh, Deborah Martinez. And so we look forward to answering any additional questions at the end of this session. Thank you so much. Okay, hi everyone. I'm Leah Jorgensen. I'm the, one of the chief residents at UT Austin um, Dell Medical School and I have my co-chief here, Wien Trong, with me. Um, we rotate at Dell Children's, which is a freestanding children's hospital in Austin, Texas. Um, it is a level one trauma center and it is growing. We currently have 240 beds and our fourth bed tower will be done this fall. We're really excited and all that things that We'll be coming with that. We will be starting a new BMT program, expanding our PICU. So lots of fun, new things, exciting. Growing at Dell Children's, much like the city of Austin, which has just continued to grow rapidly, which is fun and exciting. We also have a level three and level four NICU, which you'll be able to rotate through. Our EDC is about 6,000 patients a year, and we have a very robust cardiac um, center, which does more every year, 200 um, open heart cases, including transplants. Um, we really at our program try to emphasize um, work-life balance, which I think a lot of people use as a buzzword, especially in this space, but we really do um, practice that. And one way we do that is with our X plus Y schedule, which this will be our four, fifth year doing that. And what that means is it is four week blocks, but your three weeks you would spend on service and then you have one week, which is designated clinic time. And what this means is it's just when you're on clinic, you're in clinic and that's what you're focusing on. And then when you are on your various services, all your attention is directed towards that. And in within that clinic week, we have different academic opportunities, including professional development, administrative time, um, which is really, time for the resident. It's typically a half day off where you get to schedule your doctor's appointments, set up your meetings with mentors, and really kind of take care of yourself and be well-rounded. Um, in each Y week, you have first, second, and third years, which really tends to create a great collaboration across all three classes. Um, and we have mentorship within those three classes as well on top of faculty um, mentorship. Um, our didactic time is also kind of something we really appreciate. It's one um, full half afternoon a month that again is dedicated time that you get to be present. And we have lots of other new conferences and other various didactics sprinkled within. And then we can talk to you about. Um, can we go to the next slide? So hi, I'm Leah, nice to meet you guys. I'm 
co-chief with Leo. We're two of the four uh, chiefs here at this program. Um, we are a medium-sized program as well, but we are growing. So as of next year, we'll have 23 residents and one, maybe two child girl residents as well, rotating, um, matriculating into the intern class. Um, we are also a growing, with our growing residency, we're also growing in fellowships. So this year we're starting our it will be our inaugural NICU fellows, um, and next year will be our inaugural PICU fellows starting. We also have PHM and uh, PEM that are both well established within our program now for a couple years. Um, our PEM fellowship is pretty competitive given that it is a level, um, a very busy ED. Um, so we rotate through primarily primarily through our main hospital, Dell Children's, but we also rotate through the adult hospital for our NICU and nursery services, as well as our continuity clinic where we do our Y week um, through a FHQ um, clinic. And we have kind of, we try to tailor our um, rotations to what you want to do but we are also open to residents who want to explore during the first two years um, we don't have primary primary tracks um, but definitely we have ideas and uh, mentorship for whatever some special needs you're interested in in the future um, we also offer a lot of unique learning opportunities, including in our professional development week, we have a lot of um, a robust advocacy curriculum, as well as a culinary medicine curriculum. This year, we're starting a DEI week, which is a diversity, equity, and inclusion week, um, as well as a new research curriculum within our program um, to make well-rounded residents, hopefully. Uh, we also this year are introducing a global health opportunity to our residents. Will be six residents will be going to um, Puebla, Mexico for a, a Spanish integration opportunity. Um, we in Austin we have a very diverse population. We have a lot of good food here. We also have a lot of um different sports and outdoor activities people love paddle boarding boating in the summer um and i think those are big things feel free to follow us we try to keep our social media up to date um for all for you guys to follow along thank you so much to every program that has um joined us today and we are so grateful okay so um to the applicants or participants do you have any questions for any program now will be the best time for you to ask hi i'm Kerry, and i'm international medical graduate from ecuador and uh, i would like to know um how does the program has this related to the teaching if the residents are involved in the teaching and also as learners. Would any program representative like to answer, answer the question for us? Um, Katie, is, that, is this directed to any program in particular? Or anyone can? Oh. Yeah, anyone can. Okay. Answer. Any any program representative willing to answer the question for us? Yes. Can you repeat it one more time? I'm sorry. Um, how the program teaches to the, to the residents how to teach. So teach, for teaching so, residents how to teach, okay. So I'm from UTMB in Galveston. Um, so for us, we have a residence as teachers curriculum. And at the very beginning of our academic year, we also have supervisory conferences. And part of that time is dedicated to that residence teachers curriculum as well. Um, we utilize the graduate medical education and um, academic pediatrics journals that our residents will 
get some information from and then our residents themselves will do the presentations um, in addition to their clinical presentations they'll they'll give presentations about how to teach um, in addition to how to teach how to orient medical students um, you know it's it's important as a as a teacher um, in addition to kind of teaching those um, those teachy type of things, but to, to recognize who your audience is and making sure that the medical students um, or the learners, um, whoever they are, are also oriented to the space as well, you know where different things are. So that I think is another um, piece for welcoming learners in that, in that area. But we have resident teachers curricula. Thank you. Thank you so much, Steph. I can answer that as well. And this is one of my favorite questions to answer. I'm Andrea Tatum. I'm from Baylor in Houston. We often get this question during recruitment season. And my favorite answer to tell you is that it's not an option with us, it's an obligation. Because if you're gonna be <laughs> a pediatrician, you have to be a teacher. And so one of the things that we've done is develop the longitudinal curriculum to help expose the hidden curriculum in medicine and teaching is a part of that. And so we start in um, intern year with how to teach different things. Um, how to give case reports, how to do chalk talks, how to teach at the bedside. We go through in the second year with how do you deal with difficult learners? How do you um, make sure that when you're teaching, you're incorporating evidence-based medicine into your teaching? And so we build upon that, how to be a leader, how to be a, a, super, a supervisor, how to be an upper level. And then even more so than that, how do you teach in the community? And so we take it all the way through each of your years of medicine, um, first year through third year, and even into the community. We also have the opportunity for our residents to be certified with the Academy of Resident Educators. And I think it's something that's really important, particularly as pediatricians, because not only do we take care of our patients, we take care of their families, but we educate and we're lifelong learners along the way. So again, as a lifelong learner, that's one of my favorite questions to answer. So thank you for asking that. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Does anyone have any other questions? Um, I have two questions. Could I go ahead? Of course. Hi. So I had one question for uh, Texas Tech El Paso. You did mention about um, opportunities for global health, and I was really interested to learn more about that. So uh, while we, so I guess what I meant to say more was we have the exposure. Um, it's almost like you're immediately immersed into it upon starting residency. Um, I think I had a kind of a unique experience in that I going in, I, I already spoke Spanish. I was familiar with, you know, what healthcare looks like on the other side of the border. Um, and then all of a sudden being put on, you know, in everybody else's shoes, anybody who doesn't speak Spanish or is anyone who is not familiar with, you know, uh, Mexican culture. Um, all of a sudden, I have all of this exposure to other countries, other Latin American countries, other um, Middle Eastern countries, and it was definitely eye-opening. So I think, uh, so there's not a formal per se, um, like a rotation or um, anything like that, that we can put you on that's you know, you're just going to be doing global health for the entire month. We have a border health um, month that we do for all of our residents, um, where we allow them more time to be immersed into, you know, what healthcare looks like in the United States Mexico border. Um, but that's more so just geared for our region. Um, I think we're looking into opportunities to be able to incorporate. Um, other countries as well, but just given the unique location where we're at, we feel like our, um, you know, some of our strongest uh, ties are with the community of El Paso, who, like I mentioned, does have access to healthcare in Mexico, and kind of like using that Border Health Month as um, kind of immersing ourselves a little bit more into, you know, what does that look like, and what does that um, entail as far as how we have to tailor our care for these patients. Um, so that's kind of more what I meant to say, I guess. Um, where we have the exposure to this unique location and this unique population. And from there kind of expanding it to, you know, how can we apply this to all of these new um, cultures that we're now being exposed to? Um, so that's, so I hope that answers your question. Thank you so much, Dr. Morin. Uh, I did have another question for um, UTMB Galveston. 
just I just had a question about like how many weeks of pediatric subspecialty rotations would we would we have during our residency? So during residency, you would have subspecialty already into your curriculum for infectious disease, for GI, for allergy immunology, for um, abuse medicine, and for developmental peds, for adolescent. I think that there are some, I don't have the curriculum in front of me. I think that there's allergy some. immunology, Amber. Thank you. We also have those six individualized learning blocks implemented into the curriculum where you can choose other ones um, to other ones that are not necessarily embedded into the curriculum are ones like genetics, neurology, endocrinology, um, and kind of pretty much all of the other um, subspecialties that our, our program offers. So we have a, we have a lot of I don't think it's at Hemonc. That was another one that we have um, embedded into our curriculum at this time. Thank you so much. For that question. Thank you so much. Does anyone have any final questions? Because we are going to be moving into the main session in few in a few minutes. Does anyone have any other questions for any program? Hi. Um, yeah, I actually do have one question. Uh, thank you all for being here. Um, so I have a question for Dell Medical. Uh, I heard you guys mention that you have a, a research curriculum integrated into um, your entire curriculum. So I'm kind of curious what that looks like. Yeah, this is something that we are working to roll out this year, and it will be a longitudinal curriculum that is started in turn year and expands across all three years. In turn year, focusing really on what, what is research that's kind of this nebulous concept, really kind of giving you the tools which you need to complete your scholarly activity, and that can look different for lots of different for all different residents. And we're trying to be kind of comprehensive, not just fence research, but um, clinical research, QI projects, um, and other various ways that you can be active. And then second year, kind of really at the beginning of the year, trying to focus on what your project is going to be, making sure you have the right mentorship and being ready to present towards the end of your second, early third year. So that if you are applying to a fellowship, you are, have something that is on your application that you have worked on and feel like you can have ownership over. So it's something that's built into your Y weeks into that professional development time. So it's designated time because that's the other hard thing about being a resident is it feels like you have all these clinical duties and to have all these additional things asked of you on top sometimes can feel like there's not enough time in the day. So we really wanted to try and create a longitudinal curriculum where that's there for you and we can help you support through that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Any other, I know I said this before, but any final questions? If you have another opportunity. All right, so I have one question. I hope we do have time to take this, but I have a question that I would like to ask. So and any program can, you know, I would like every program to sort of um, give a response. So um, what type of interdisciplinary learning opportunities does your program offer? I can start with that because we, the two, the two should I just had a meeting without this. Um, we are, for a practical way, we had the shadowing opportunities within our kind of community ambulatory block for PEDs uh, during intern year, where we shadow nurse, case manager, just anywhere in the hospital and outpatient as well. Um, so we try, we are trying to start that again this year um, and have all our interns be able to have experience and um, shadow different, um, the different people in the hospital that we work with. Along with all that, kind of within the second and third year, um, we do things like 
a multidisciplinary round in the morning when you're award so that we as a team with our case managers and nurse managers can work together to um, come up with patient care plans for the day um, and do what's right for the patient. Yeah, at UT Houston, we have something similar um, during our intern year where we can shadow a nurse for the afternoon or morning so that we can kind of see, you know, from their aspect, what our orders and things look like, because, you know, they're actually like pretty different. So we can kind of sympathize there. And we also go into the community um, and sorry, my little one's getting tired. Um, and we also go to the community and shadow like lactation consultants. Um, and like we go to an ABA therapy place to learn, you know, when we send our kids with autism to get ABA therapy, what does that actually mean? Um, so we use a lot of our community resources as well to learn from. So much. Thank you so much. So the breakout room is going to close in a few seconds. I am so grateful to every program and every participant. All right. So we can all move to the main session now. Welcome back everyone. I hope you had a great time at the breakout room sessions with the program directors and program representatives. And I do hope that you learned a lot more about some of the programs that you might want to be applying to. Um, we are glad to have had you back. Oh, I see in the chat, it was amazing. Yes, I like that. I like to hear that. So welcome back again, everyone. <clears throat> um, I'd like to um, invite everyone to please fill out our survey um, for this session. So the survey is for both program representatives as well as participants. Um, you can access the survey by um, using the QR code on the screen. Um, just scan the QR code on the screen and to take you directly to the survey. And then you can please fill it out. We would like to get feedback on how you felt about the webinar as well as what we can do better. And your feedback is super important to us. So please, again, I'll ask that everyone please fills out this survey so that we can improve what we do here at FPR. Thank you everyone and thank you program directors and thank you program representatives for being with us this evening. We are very appreciative of your efforts to um, improve the process for applicants and we do not take your presence here for granted. Um, thank you once again. Um, we will be moving to the resident happy hours shortly.